beginning. We got to let everybody in too, right? Does yeah. it let them in automatically? Yeah, they come popping in. Oh, look, everybody's jumping on. They're excited about our webinar. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Cool. We'll wait in like a minute, I think. Yeah, How many people are registered? 25. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So maybe... I guess we'll have to move broker dealers more often so we get more participation on our webinars. <laughs> Sorry, guys, just making a joke. We're gonna give it. We're gonna give it a couple minutes here, or like a minute or two, because we only have about less than half the people on. While everybody's joining, I want to just bring up: if you have a question, uh, we have a little bit of a different process. Um, you can just simply text our office line. 724-260-0491. We put that up. And um, we'll get that question and we'll make sure to answer that at the end. Yeah, we're gonna do a little overview of like what we know or some frequently asked questions for everybody today um, once everybody jumps on. So that might answer 90% of the questions. And then at the end, we'll kind of open up. So if you guys could just have your cell phones ready text it to the office. Once again, that's 724-260-0491. We'll say it again if you want to get a pen. Karen, do you want to write a piece of paper? We can pull it up, maybe. It's just our office. Yeah. 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 Okay. One more minute. Yeah, we have one more minute. Oh, and Happy New Year, because we haven't talked to everybody. Goodbye, 2022. Hello, 2023. <laughs> That's like the understatement of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's healthy. You know, at our, the Stein household, it's been flu and cold, like bonanza for many weeks on end. So hopefully. Yeah. Well, we got through that now. So hopefully we won't be getting anything else because we have all of our immunities built up. Oh, Joe, you too. <laughs> so, it's been a long run, I know, so. it has been. No COVID though, but. Yeah. Pretty much everything else out of the sun. Yeah. Well, some of us had COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, All okay. Time. So I think we should get started. Are you guys good yeah. with that? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to keep this really informal today, guys, because it's really, we're here for you. It's Q&A. Um, we're not going to fill it up with a lot of fluff. So we've been making this big change from our old custodian NFS to our new custodian LPL. And I mean, in general, it's been going very, very well. We've transitioned. I think we only have, you know, a few accounts left to transition over. Um, for most people, it's been pretty seamless. I mean, of course, you always expect like a hiccup here or there, but there's still lots of questions. So like our first job in this was to just get everything where it needed to be and make sure everything's correct. So our team has been doing like a fantastic job of doing that. Actually, I mean, I definitely want to give a shout out to Kim, who really masterminded a lot of the transition. And by the way, she got married last week. So she's on her honeymoon right now. So we hope um, she's enjoying that. And Kara and Brittany have been absolutely amazing stepping up to the plate, doing things that they haven't done before, which is kind of cool because now they all like know each other's jobs. And there's been a lot of cross training there, um, even though it's been a little bit of like drinking out of a fire hose. And I also want to let everybody know that you'll be seeing a new welcome letter to our newest edition, Angel, who's right. been, yeah, I, well, I know, I don't think she wants to be on the webinar yet. She's a little nervous about that, but she's been an amazing addition to the team. I mean, she kind of just, she joined us about two months ago and she's like slid right in and it's like she's been here for the last 10 years and she's been a tremendous asset during the transition as well so you'll be learning about uh her uh, a little bit more in our newsletter so if you hear from angel don't be alarmed a couple of times you're like oh, you got a new employee and you didn't even tell anybody so uh we were just making sure we didn't scare away first before we sent out her letter <laughs> anyway okay so in general i think no I, gonna... we had a bunch of questions and i think there were a few areas that most of the questions fell into. So I want to ask you guys a couple of clarifying points on this that we've been getting a lot. Okay. And uh, 
we'll go back and forth and then we'll, I think we saw some questions coming in. So right. account transfer process, like you said, we've gotten through most of the accounts right now. A few folks are still following up with the account transfers have been going fairly well. What other points would you share regarding those transitions of accounts? It hasn't been yeah. too long to get them once the documents are signed, yeah. but if you walk, if you haven't been uh, approached by us yet, we'll be reaching out. Most of you we've probably heard from, but what did you want to clarify in the account transfer, the timeline there? Well, there's a few things. I mean, do you want to look at the questions see if they just align with some of our bullet points already? Sure. So far, no questions. Oh, we haven't got any. Okay, so let's start with just transferring the account. So basically, if you haven't already done so, or even if you have, if you had accounts at NFS, we created or mirrored as closely as we could new accounts at LPL. Um, that includes like contributions, distributions. Um, for sure, we've had to go back through and double check all of those to make sure that everything transferred over okay. But there's been a lot of questions um, that have come up just as the process is happening because it's not an immediate process. Although once we initiate the transfer, it usually happens within three to five business days. There have been some accounts that were like stragglers for various different reasons. So for example, you might be logging in to your old Wealthscape online access, the NFS login, that's what it was. We used to have two portals. One was called the Stein Wealth Advisor portal. The other portal was called NFS. Even though together they provided the functionality our clients needed, one of our biggest feedbacks over the years has been like, why are there two portals? It's very confusing. I can't remember which one to go to. So what happened was, is in your old accounts is your, um, your old SW, like or um, Stein Wealth portal, that is deactivated. That was deactivated like immediately. But Wealthscape, NFS portal, that should still be open. So if you were logging into that, you might have seen like, oh, I have a million dollars, but 300,000 is like here. And there's another, you know, and then, but the rest of it's gone. It wasn't that it was gone. It's that if you had multiple accounts, some of them came over faster than others. Um, in addition to that, there were some instances where like a client didn't realize it, but they didn't sign all the DocuSign. So like one account was a straggler and like, we in our auditing process are looking for all of that, but sometimes there's a couple day lag because you can't, you know, you think it's in process, but it's not. So it, it's not anything to be alarmed about. Also, there are a few accounts that might have assets that like they initially reject and then we have to push it back through again. So every single day, our team is working through what we call NIDOs or not in good orders to figure out is it really an issue? You know, does the client need to sign again? Is there an asset that's stuck over there? And we're sweeping them over. Okay. And in addition to that too, Mel, there might be remainder dividends that yeah. come in, you know, for about yeah. a quarter. So yeah. there still might be some small amounts in those accounts yes. and all that. You, you touched on online access well, too. So. Yeah, let's let me answer that last yeah. question. So just to be clear, there's something called like say all your accounts were zeroed out at NFS. Mm. It's possible that you see a small balance pop up again. If there was a dividend or interest that posted or that basically was get like, um, what's the word, sorry, not posted, executed or, yeah, yeah no, it, but it hadn't posted to the account, it might show up there. But that ACAT transfer, which is the electronic transfer system between custodians, that stays open for 60 or 90 days or is 180 days. I believe it's six more months. Than yeah, I think it's six months. So it's 180. So it'll every like week they have like a button they push and they just keep sending the assets over. Um, there are also a few instances where like maybe a systematic contribution, like you're putting a hundred dollars in. Like I, I had like we had a few where for whatever reason NFS, even though the account was closed, they put they pulled the hundred dollars. So there was like a pull for a hundred dollars here and one at NFS. And that confused people. We are going back through and reconciling all of that for every single client line by line. Um, and we're doing that as quickly as we can. But if there is an issue, if you alert us to it, we'll be able to like pull that to the top of the pile. But I mean, we're getting through them very quickly. But these are some things that you might be seeing that could be possibly confusing. We wanted to clarify those. Good clarification. There. So is there anything else you guys want to add there? Um, the other pretty quick. The other thing you you quick. may see on the NFS account, in in addition to a dividend or interest that posts to your to your old account, is if it if it's a managed account, which are most clients, um, you may get a, a 
prorated fee refund. So the minute your account leaves and closes, uh, the management agreement that we had in place ceases and um, the remainder of that quarter gets paid back to you. Right. Um, so then that money will just roll into the, the um, LPL account. And then of course your new management agreement starts yeah. at that firm. So you'll likely see a prorated reimbursement on the NFS side and you'll see a prorated fee yeah. on your new account. It's all the same in the end. Um, but that's, that, that's just one other thing that you may see. Yeah, that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought up fees um, because it may look a little wonky or confusing for the last quarter and the first quarter that you get billed for the new account, but what it will do is it will like all average out. So it should be, there should be no difference in fees. Um, and we'll send out a document eventually explaining exactly how the new billing cycles work at LPL, but it's no different than it was before unless we otherwise like had a conversation with you. So if you left in December, you'll get some money back. So when you come over, your first billing might be a little bit more than you're used to, but it's because it's making up for the money that, you know, the period of time that you didn't get billed at the other broker dealer. So if it's confusing, like, I think this is something as we meet with everyone throughout the year, we have a checklist of things. We're going to double check, triple check, go back through with you to make sure everybody's clear. Uh, the, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is, I'll get to them in just a moment. Um, if you're looking at your transaction activity on NFS, you may see um, either what's called an account closure fee or an ACAT transfer fee. Um, most of the accounts at NFS will be assessed that. Um, once the transition is complete, we will go back and reimburse those account fees if you incurred one um, to, to you. So specifically, any account closure fee or um, ACAT transfer fee, uh, you will get credited for. Um, so probably won't yeah. happen on your first statement, but um, it'll certainly the happen quarter, by the end of this quarter. It, it will, we it need will to dust the settle and then we need to assess it all and then we'll go back through I'm one sure at a time and make sure we get them right. Um, another piece of that that's potentially confusing for people is every year you get charged a custodial fee from the from the custodian. So you see that, I mean, well, most of you do. Um, some of those are reimbursed, but they get, if you see, they also charge you sometime the custodial fee at the time of the account closure, but that's a fee that you would have incurred anyway. And actually your first year's LPL custodial fee is I believe waived. So, you know, it's, and you don't have to pay that again this year, which is really nice. Um, but as far as fees, we know that can be like a little tricky. We will continue to send out like short, very, um, not concentrated, but um, concise. concise correspondences about various topics like every once in a while. So I, I encourage everybody to take a look at those. Like we'll send one out and say, hey, here's how you understand your fee. We try not to send too much information at once because it's just overwhelming. And But I promise you as a team, we're very committed that now that the move's almost done to making sure everything is correct, number one, um, and that we're back to business as usual, but number two, that we're focusing on all the new benefits and client education, like what you need to know to make sure we have a successful implementation here, as well as a successful tax season. And uh, so you know, we're about ahead. at 15 minutes now. Okay. So to save a little bit, we'll go a little over and save some time for questions. questions. Yeah, there was a question coming. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, the, the, the question here was, how does the transition impact taxes? Um, so essentially for all intents and purposes, there is no tax impact. Everything is literally just picked up and moved as is, and there, there's no tax implications. Uh, the only thing to note on that is um, if your accounts moved um, this year, then you will also get a 1099. Well, if they moved last year, then you'll get a 1099 from NFS as well as this year, you'll get a 1099 or last right. year from, from um, LPL, LPL as well. Uh, that only happened for one year, of course. And then um, yeah. if your accounts are closed at NFS, then you won't. But um, They are reportable, but not taxable events for retirement accounts. So like what happens is the IRS can see if it was a direct custodial to custodial transfer. So you might get some extra documents this year, like 5498 and things like that. But those just need to be kept with your tax documents in that folder and they're they're just there for like reporting if we ever needed to prove for some reason that you didn't liquidate your IRA it just got transferred but I've actually never had that 
ever be an issue if it was a custodial to custodial transfer. So, I mean, essentially all you're doing is you have a bucket, it has assets in it, right? It NFS, you, we opened a new bucket, we plopped those assets into the new bucket. We didn't buy or sell or anything. So the only thing that creates taxable events is buying and selling and non-retirement accounts or direct actual distributions. So I hope that answers the question. If not, text us again. Um, oh, so tax documents themselves. Let's talk about like how this ties into online access. So one of the things that happened was when we left NFS, um, because of FINRA regulations and other things, we couldn't leave the old links to Wealthscape on the site. So we've realized a lot of people just don't have them because they were always going to our site. So Kara is sending out an email. Kara, did it go out yet? I know in the next, hopefully 24 hours, giving those links to everyone. You can certainly always just Google Wellscape Investor. Uh, you gotta be careful with that though, because it has to say like but there's multiple. I mean, there's Wellscape Investor. You can yeah, but I've had, a, I've had a few clients do that and they had the wrong link and then they were really frustrated because they were thinking they were locked out, but they weren't. You're, I confirmed with NFS and now I don't know if I always believe everything you say <laughs> just because sometimes they tell you things, but that, that access should stay open for the next few months. So if you wanna keep logging in your old accounts to check if they're zeroed out and also to get tax documents, I believe they're also gonna mail them to you. You shouldn't have to worry about that at all. This should be pretty seamless. And if you're really confused or not sure around tax time, shoot us an email or call us. You can always email info at Steinwell. That will get you an answer really quickly on something administrative like that because someone will intercept that immediately. Um, also, I think it, it would be best practice to go into your old accounts, click on each one, go to documents, and please go and download your 1231 statement. It will give you the full picture of the last year. Because if, let's say we moved your accounts on December 20th, and, and they didn't get here until January 3rd, we won't have access to that little gap of time. So I think just for documentation sake, it would be nice for you guys to do that. It only takes a couple minutes and plus you can check on the accounts too. So as a best practice, we would recommend that. And that's easy to find. Um, plus we have downloaded almost all of the historical performance data that we had before the transfer, but the new portal is like starting over from the day that the new assets arrived. So if you need that, we have access to it, but we're not like actively, eventually we might put that in your client portal. There's a place where we can share documents. So if you ever want it, you can go back and look, but we do have it all. Um, so what else? Oh, the other pieces of online access. Um, this has been, do we have another question? What if, oh, you want to do that? Sure. Um, so the, the question was, what benefits were there and, and essentially why, why do we make the, the transition? Okay. Do you want to just take that since I've been there? Sure. Okay. Um, there's a lot. And, and for the sake of time, I'll, I'll kind of just try to hit on, on the, the top one or two. Uh, the biggest one is the difference in technology. So Melissa had mentioned the consolidation of two websites to one, and that's that's kind of just a microcosm for um, the, the technology improvements in general. Um, you as the clients, you, know, you don't have a whole lot of interaction with the custodian besides online access. That essentially is your link to the custodian. On the flip side, we integrate with them in essentially every single thing we do, whether it's opening up a new account, depositing money into an account, withdrawing money to send you money as a distribution, changing a beneficiary, every single thing that we do, trading on your accounts, a lot of our research and tools, all of our account maintenance and management transactions, all runs through the custodian. And our ability to integrate with them and interact with them is highly dependent on their technology. Well, and their systems and processes, yeah. right? Like um, we're at the mercy of that. NFS is a great custodian. They just don't have the top of the line technology. Or capabilities, um, I mean, they're not evolving. Yeah, to, to make a long story short, they've been around for, for forever. Um, they were purchased by Fidelity many, many years ago. And they've kind of just been wrapped under this big Fidelity umbrella for 
decades. And Fidelity has other custodial services that they're just pumping all of their money and time into called Fidelity Institutional. And NFS was kind of just this old legacy. They're company. not investing. They're in just it. not investing. And so as, you know, as technology has improved over the last in, 10 years, which has been, I mean, 10, 10 years, years ago, time. this mm -hmm. industry, I mean, you know, the way first, it is like been completely revolutionized with technology. And if, if you have a company that isn't investing in it, eventually you're going to start to fall behind. And that's kind when, of what started happening. When we first moved to NFS, they were actually very good at technology. But just think about what your phones looked like 10 years ago. Um, if, if you had a BlackBerry, you can you can get updates on it, but it's never going to be an iPhone. Yeah. You have to change the phone at that point. And, and it's basically, that's what we did. So uh, you'll see it in your online access. But for us, it's literally in every single thing we do, which just makes our job from an administrative standpoint, from a transactional standpoint, better, which frees up more time for us to do what's important, which is work with you, gives us more infrastructure and capabilities to um, interact and service. work on your accounts better, more efficiently. So that's really the biggest one. Yeah. LPL is a kind of a unique broker dealer slash custodian because um, they don't have any proprietary products. Like I mentioned, Fidelity owns NFS. So they have Fidelity mutual funds and Fidelity banking. And I mean, technically like they're separate, but um, I mean. And LPL is the largest custodian and broker dealer for independent firms like ours. Um, they are a good fit for firms like ours because they specifically cater to our needs. Um, and, and they don't have any proprietary products or, or other distractions per se that take away their focus. Their research and time and support um, goes into what we need from them, yeah. which is custodial services, compliance, broker dealer services, things like that. So um, that's really the biggest reason. Yeah. I mean, there's others, but I have a couple, uh, like, you know, just kind of, an, I'll, and I'll try to keep it as short as I can. I mean, the operational efficiencies for us are really, really important because it allows us. It frees up us and our staff's time to focus on you. I mean, we could either babysit a transaction or I can give you an extra phone call, but we've been very bogged down with a lot of what I consider to be administrative nonsense for a long time. In addition to that, I mean, there are just direct like impacts on you, like from the ease of doing business. Like we don't need account opening process is like been minimized to seven minutes. It's like a signature documents get automatically delivered to you. We don't need driver's licenses anymore. There's a lot of data and like people collect that you don't need. If we have to transfer an account, we don't need a statement from you. It's things that like administrative stuff we have to request from you that's really like putting a burden and like homework on you. Just everything is simpler, better, faster. Um, in addition to that, we have actually, they have other resources that are available to us. Like they have some lending connections for clients. I mean, we could have gotten those before, but it was more piecemeal. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like account features that we didn't have before that you can control online. Um, it gives you more control, empowers you. The online access is a big thing. I mean, just having a consolidated portal that has everything in one spot and is like actually something that will be improved upon on a regular basis. I mean, we have access to now, like we have relationships with CPAs and attorneys, but now we have an entire legal and accounting team we can call if you have a one-off question. So there's a lot of things like that that we do behind the scenes that help us support you better. So I know that's a long answer, but like, this is not something that we would take lightly. Like this is a decision you make because like, I mean, you have, there's a lot of work involved in doing this on our end, but we know it's the right thing for you guys and it's the right thing for us. I'm just going to run through a couple more quick okay, questions yeah. here. Um, where and how often do fees shows up in your account? Um, none of that actually changes. So uh, anybody that that we are doing um, fee based um, work for, uh, we charge we charge quarterly. Um, so you'll see that on all of your quarterly statements. It's also online, of course. Um, they get charged at the end of the month, and, and you'll see them there as as your um, quarterly uh, management fee. If you have any questions, certainly, of course, you can give us a call. None of that's changed. That's all literally the same. The exact day that those fees hit may change a little well, bit. Well, and we're going to send out, as I said, a written doc. We already have a written document that explained that to clients that every single client has received. I mean, whether you read it or not is is, que is a, qu a question, but we are going to redo that document and then explain, you know, with exact examples, exactly how it works again. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, but it's, you know, it gives you the logistics on like exactly when it's billed, how the snapshot's done and all of that.
next question is a good question as well. Um, we actually had had specific with the questions. Sure. Um, during the transition, were there any time that our money was not working? Um, and we, we did answer this one in one of our um, email Q and A's because we knew this was important. So I appreciate you bringing this one up. Um, the way that we transfer accounts is what's called in kind, mm -hmm. uh, meaning we literally pick up the money right. exactly how it is, move it and drop it unchanged. So if you had a stock or bond or whatever that was here, it moves over as is. So anything that happened in between the account transfer is irrelevant. Yeah. If the price went up, you benefited. Yeah. If it went down, it was the same instance just on the other end. There was no material change from the account being moved over. So being um, in or out of the market is not a concern. Every, everything uh, in between the account transitions um, remains as is, essentially as if they weren't right. you know, moved. And, that's so. a, and I'm glad you brought up that question too, because I think it is confusing like mm -hmm. what is in kind means, Absolutely. but also this, this happens a lot. Clients want to reconcile their balances. Like, oh, I moved 100,000 and now there's 102 here. We're transferring shares. So they're, you have to count shares, not balances. And that might even be a little off if there was like a resi like a dividend that got reinvested or something. But like, if you are looking to look at one statement and look at the other, you really need to look at the number of mutual fund or ETF or like stock shares that you have because the, fluct the price fluctuation, I mean, it absolutely will have fluctuated in between because I mean, from the minute it left to where it, it went. So like that, Nothing is bought or sold unless otherwise noted, or there were some accounts that were reallocated once they arrived here, right. that that would have been done already with like the permission and like our discretion over those accounts, but that's a buy sell on the same day. Right. So, so it doesn't mean yeah. that we didn't make a change once yeah. it was here. We, we would have, you know, made that similar change had we not yeah. had a transition, but in the process mm -hmm. of transitioning, the, the, the funds remained as is whatever they were in cash, obviously right. it just was cash, but uh, other than that, so yeah, we're approaching okay. a half hour, guys. Are there any uh, other right. like yeah. uh, last questions or last points that you didn't get to that you wanted to share? We do. Um, there's a couple things. So getting online, that's been a little hairy, just for a number of reasons. Um, here's what's happened when accounts are transferring. We've made it a practice here. If like not all the accounts are here, we're waiting to send the link that comes. It's the LPL link. It comes from the LPL account view. And we've sent out many emails about this. If you haven't received a link yet, it's 90% because not all the accounts are there or we just haven't gotten to it, but we're getting through them pretty quickly. If you want a link sooner and you think you need one, you can call us or, or you can email us and let us know. Um, the other thing that's happening is we sent many links that are now expired. The links expire for security purposes after 72 hours. And that's just for you to get registered and set up. Once right. you're online, then... If yeah. it's if that happens, you can just email us and we'll get you a new one. But we're actually going to go back through and audit everyone whose links have expired. And we're going to give you guys a reminder and send that out. I mean, if you... The other thing that's cha not changed, but I think has come up is in account view... If you have a husband and wife investor, okay, this can be confusing, okay? Um, you each really have to register, even if you're going to use one as a primary, because now, and NFS even has this, if you log into a new computer and you haven't logged in for a while, it's going to send a text to somebody's mobile number. So if you're, you know, if you're Susie Q and John's your husband and John registered, but you didn't, even though you can see each other's accounts on your own, if Susie Q tries to log in using his login, but he's at the grocery store, she's not going to be able to do it. So we are recommending, even if you only do it once, as a best practice to log in each individually, have your own logins. This day and age, I mean, two-step authentication isn't going away, guys. I mean, I know people don't like it, but it's the, the, the world we live in, and cybersecurity is really important to us. We wouldn't want your financial data getting stolen. I don't think you would either. So, I mean, that's why they do it. You can give somebody authorization well, as yeah. well. Let you're... me let me get yeah. Do you mind if I? Because it's right. a little confusing. So there's other odd instances. Like let's say you only have one email address. Um, then you're just going to have to kind of live with the two-step authentication. But the other thing you have to do when you log in is you have to choose your paperless settings. And if Susie Q logs in and goes paperless. That doesn't mean John's paperless. John has to log in and go paperless himself too. Once that's set, it's easy, but you do have to do it the one time. 
The other piece of it is, is let's say Susie Q just doesn't have an email address at all. She never accesses the account and she doesn't care. She actually, we have an email template that we can blast out that she can email us and say, hey, please make me paperless with these settings, even though I don't have an email address, and then we can manually override it for you. We cannot control for your own protection, your paperless settings. It makes perfect sense. I mean, what if we were just making you go paperless and you were never getting your statements? So advisors will never have control over that but we can administratively with that email direct it for you if you don't wanna go through the process of logging it. There's a few other little nuances. If you have trouble, honestly, just call us. If every single meeting that comes in for the next year, we're gonna go over this stuff and do a personal demo. I think that's a good, that's a good point there. We're right in a half hour. I wanna just bring up- Well, there are still a couple. Yeah, um, something, something that's, that's new, um, but um, important. Uh, we're we're using a new secure encryption uh, when we correspond with clients for email. So yeah, for email, and it was just kind of one of the regulatory things that that we upgraded. Uh, we already had a, a good system before, but we we made it even better uh, as part of this transition. So anytime we're emailing you um, or replying to your email with secure information, um, which would be you know any type of like social security number, account number. Uh, things like that. Um, it's going to go through our secure email server, um, which is called Inky. And uh, basically the first time you get one, you'll get a notification that you have an email um, and, and you would just click that and um, you do have to register. The good news is um, there, it, it can be synced with like your Google, your Microsoft, or Gmail, or Gmail yeah. accounts. Like, so if you already have a Microsoft account or Gmail account, you, you, you can do a single or sign you can up do from a there software. or you can self-register make your own username and password, but um, that's how you would then view and download any of those documents. Um, so just, just keep that in mind that it's, well, it's um, it does, just a highly secure, you know, yeah. encrypted service. It's like I-N-K-Y and actually Kara was, we have a screenshot of it. We're going to send out in the near future and like we're let everybody know. It, it does kind of look like a phishing email, to be honest. It says you have an email from Inky from Melissa Stein. It, it, it's real. Like I know this is going to be a struggle for a while for clients, but it's just something that we're all going to have to get used to. Um, I mean, we got rid of like, you know, we got down to one client portal, but this is something where like, I think you're probably used to getting these from accountants or bankers. I mean, everyone uses it now. You have to do it. Otherwise, your, your data can be intercepted really easily. I mean, there are just situations now where people are getting information out of email all the time. Even if ours is secure and yours isn't, you yeah, know. And if you reply back to us, a secure email, in that system, it's secure also. Yeah. So you can send us secure information via email, um, and, and it's just uh, something we wanted to bring up because it is new, but it's it's a you know it's a great system. It keeps everybody safe, and you know that's that's obviously our number one priority, even if it's a little bit more cumbersome. Mm -hmm. I only have like three quick things. Do you have? Are there any other I'll questions? Check where you want to go. Okay. Go so a couple other things: people who are putting money in or taking money out. Um. That system is through the automated clearinghouse. It hasn't changed, but it may be a little different from how NFS was operating. So like when you're getting money, like we send you a paycheck, if we send it on the 15th, you typically might not see it until the 17th. I always say like plus or minus two business days because your bank is probably holding it overnight, even though the money's left here, okay? Um, if it's a Saturday or a holiday, it could be even a couple days later. I know I tell every single client that, but I guess I've gotten a little feedback that like sometimes NFS, like say you're, say Saturday's the 15th, they might send it on Friday instead of Monday. LPL is not doing that. They have a very strict schedule. If it's like, if you're payday falls on a Saturday, you're not getting, it's not going out till Monday, which means you might not see it till Wednesday. I mean, this isn't a payroll system. So I always tell clients, you should have an extra like, you know, month's expenses or so in your checking anyway, just because there's a little bit of like timing on this, but that's always been the case, but it might feel a little different um, just because it's a different custodian. They might have slightly different procedures, but it should be around the same time. If something is missed, by all means, like we are doing everything we can to make sure no one is missing anything. But like, I'm not gonna say there won't be any little like mishaps here or there. We'll make it right as quickly as we can. Um, but just be aware of that. The other big change is 
Some clients like only take an RMD once a year from their accounts. Like say they have like a small or an IRA, but they're not taking money out every month. So their RMD requirement isn't met. We have them set up for what we call an auto RMD. So like we might say January 15th, you would get like your one distribution. We'd withhold the taxes and it goes into your checking. We now have to choose, I think the 15th or the 25th for that. To, or, I'm sorry. It's like the 5th and the 25th for that to happen. So if it was another odd day, it might be off a little. We'll eventually let everybody know, but that's a little like kind of nuance that I've seen. Um, one other thing just to, to point out, if you are ever wanting to make contributions to a non-IRA account, like an individual account or a joint account, you actually can do that directly on account view now yourself. Yeah. You just, you already have your bank linked up to say, okay, I'm sending $10,000 from my personal account, my yeah. fancy account or whatever to your brokerage account. You know, uh, before, let us know. You, you certainly maybe want to let us know, but uh, you can do that completely on your own. Yeah, we're going to do a whole separate thing on a, like, a, we're going to do an account view demo like a webinar like this, but we'll be showing you like the different features of account view and making sure you understand what you're seeing there. Um, and certainly in the meantime, if you have any questions, let us know. And I know I'll be spending time with clients. I'm sure you guys will too in meetings going over that, but I've gotten a lot. I've, I've not gotten any negative feedback on it yet. It's actually all been like, whoa, it's pretty nice. Like I, this is so much more streamlined. There's also a document portal in there. And I think we're going to become more invested in having you guys share documents in that portal with us instead of trying to email stuff back and forth. I mean, there's a million benefits to that. Number one, it's more secure. Number two, um, like you have an actual chronological archive like order of here's your agenda from every meeting. Here's your financial plan. Like right now, you guys probably, if you're even organized, have a folder where you're just dumping all of our stuff. It's hard to keep it that way. So that's something we're probably going to put a big push on this year, too. I think it's in everybody's best interest. Um, Again, if there are any other questions, 724-260-0491. Um, I think there is a way that you can raise a hand and we can actually let you speak. We've never done it before, but we can certainly try if, if somebody doesn't have access to texting. It, I'm not sure. There's some there's little hands. Yeah, it pops up. There. So. Well, no, there's one up there. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Anyway, well, this is for you guys today. I mean, we did all this talking because we knew these were questions we already had, but like, whatever you want to ask. Well, I think you guys covered a lot there in a half hour. I mean, yeah, so I'm sure some folks will come back around with questions. Yeah, we're always here with email too. Um, hopefully you've been getting a fast response time, maybe not as fast as you're used to, but I think we've been... We appreciate everybody um, uh, being, you know, being very responsive, and, and yeah. hopefully it's been smooth. And if, there, if there's been a couple hiccups here and there, we we appreciate you uh, being understanding. Some of the uh, the the things have been a, you know, a little bit um, more complicated than we had thought. Some things have been a little bit easier than we had thought. But overall, um, our goal is to make the transition for you as easy as possible. And we do truly believe yeah. in the long run. Um, we're just going to have more access to better tools, better resources to serve you better. I think you guys will see that pretty quickly too. It's just, it's going to be good. So otherwise business as usual. So right. nothing yeah. really material changing. Mm -hmm. All right. Crossing our fingers on the market this year a little bit, you know, should get a little bit better. Hopefully sure. we're getting through some of these bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. I know that's on everybody's mind too. So besides the transition, that's clearly, you know, I think last year, everybody's, you know, paying attention to our accounts a little bit more. So hopefully account you will give you a little bit more clarity around that too. But we're always here if you have questions. There is a mobile app in case you didn't know that. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Mobile app. Right. Downloaded the app store. Account view. Yeah, account view, LPL, mobile app. Really easy, nice to use. I actually that's what I've been using for my own. Okay. Sure. Please, I hey, one more thing. If you have feedback or something that you've noticed, you're like, I don't get it, or please just say, hey, here's some general feedback because we don't know what we don't know. Like we can only react to what we're listening to. I think you guys all know that we proactively ask for feedback all the time. But I mean, if, if we don't know something's wrong, we can't fix it. Or like, if you let us know, you're kind of doing us a favor as long as you're nice about it because we can prevent that from happening to someone else. Or if you have a question, likely 20 other people have that question. Uh, we, have, yeah, we have a question about how does Tia Crep work with, with the conversion? Um, oh, yeah, that's a good question. So there's a few things that we're auditing probably in the next like couple weeks. So 
Um, anyone who is getting direct deposits from somewhere else, we are going to have to redirect to the new accounts. And that's a very manual thing. And we have a whole process plan for that. Um, we also have a few people like direct depositing their social security into their accounts. We have to log in with them and get that fixed too. So there's like, we have a sort of a whole checklist of basically things like, if, you know, say you're John and Susie Q, you know, we're going through line by line and say, okay, are all the shares here? Are all the accounts funded? Is everything the way we want it to be? Are there distributions and contributions set up? Was there any type of like, we have an Excel spreadsheet, like account features that we want to add or that we need to go back and redo? You know, that's, that's going to be a process, but I think we've captured about 90% of it, 95 in the initial, but there's going to be like 5% when we have to go back direct businesses that we're getting. Yeah, also on yeah. that note, I want to spend 30 seconds because it, it may apply. Um, if you have other accounts that were not custodied yes. at NFS, Thank which you. would be things like annuities, um, 529. 529 plans, maybe just a random like American funds account. These are accounts that were never at NFS. They're at the annuity company. Maybe it's Jackson or Lincoln or uh, Prudential. Prudential, American funds. Um, those have not changed. And there's nothing to move. Um, however, we do have to kind of re-register on the back end. So we have to tell that company. We have to tell that company. Yes. We're now here. Right? And it's purely administrative. Yeah. Um, that being said, um, of course, just like everything else, there's a form required. We, I believe, already sent out most of those forms, if not all of those forms. Those when? unfortunately do require a wet signature because yeah. um, annuities are reg uh, regulated by the state, which is just a different regulatory body. Yeah, they don't do doc design. They can't, they will take that. Yeah. So I mean, once we get those know. forms back, um, you will you will eventually see them on your account view. That data feed takes a little bit of time. It to, can take six to eight weeks it can, for Yeah, it can take up. some I mean, time for us to, to, to get the registration, kind of resync where that data is being fed. Eventually those accounts will show up on your account view. I will point out in the meantime, Nothing's changed. And if you go directly to the carrier, if you like go directly to credential.com, you can still view your account as it as always. It's just the data feed that's it's not just the data work. feed that takes some time once we get those forms back from you to redirect it. So um, those accounts do not need to be moved. They do not change, but there is some kind of like data redirection that does require a signature from you. And we're working on that as well. And eventually you'll see it in your account yeah. view, but you can still always still see them directly online if you go to, yeah. to the carrier's website directly. Yeah. And, and in our auditing process, like sometimes you'll like we'll have clients that like signed all their paperwork and then we have to go back and say, hey, we need you to do this document again or whatever. It, it's generally some type of clerical error, or like it's not that you did anything wrong or anyone. It's just in a in a transfer of this magnitude, like you're gonna have things here and there. And like we just want to get it fixed. So, I mean, I hope that that's not too annoying for you guys. We found that it hasn't been super burdensome. And we thank you. Yeah, we do. We appreciate it. Everybody's been super kind and patient and, you know, uh, given, I think our staff has like given feedback that everybody's been like totally good. I, I can understand it can be a little frustrating. Um, oh, something else I thought of, I get, I got this question the other day from a client. One of our uh, few clients I know use NFS as some type of connection with them to download their tur like to TurboTax and other tax preparation services. I've been told that should stay open for the tax year because they were really frustrated. They're like, am I going to have to go put all these transactions in? The short answer is no. If that is a problem and you're finding you can't do it, if you call me, we can get it uh, back for you at NFS and try to get it, you know, make sure it's right. But I've been told it should be fine because they still have all that data. Can you think of any of the other I questions you've been getting? Covered. Yeah. yeah. Guys covered, at least this this round. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll we'll keep the communications rolling with with updates and things like that. Where you know we're hoping within the next three to four weeks it'll be back to business as usual. Um, More yeah. looking forward at all the new cool stuff that is going to be happening. Yep. Um, I think too we're going to make a sort of a written bullet point version of this particular like webinar. So we'll send that out in the next week or so, because obviously not everybody's joined it. But uh, any other questions, text 724-260-0491, email info at steinwealth.com or any of us. I mean, we're here. Pick up the phone. You know, we're, we're here. Um, and certainly we do thank you again for your patience uh, and everything that we do. We do feel very lucky to have clients like you guys who are just, you guys always have.
you always have our back and hopefully you know we always have you guys. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Happy New Year. Talk to you guys soon.